is Katie. Welcome back to Still the Spotlight. It should come at absolutely no surprise that I love taking inspiration from pretty much all things pop culture as evident through the many lookbooks I already have on my channel. But in particular, I've always felt that film and fashion just go hand in hand. There's something about costume design that can really make or break a character for me. So I've been meaning to just sit down and compile a full list of just the movies that I find myself always coming back to to reference for style inspiration. I love discovering new things to reference when it comes to fashion. So hopefully this can act as that for you guys. I've tried to somewhat categorize it to the best of my ability and then sprinkled in there I'm also going to be recreating some of my favorite looks and also just before we jump into it I did want to reiterate that this is not my list of all-time favorite movies if that was the case Your Name and Donnie Darko would definitely be included today but they are not this is just movies that I think really have iconic fashion that is great to take some inspiration from for me, there is no denying that teen movies deliver ultimate outfit inspo, especially when it comes to more wearable looks, but for some reason, I especially seem to envy the wardrobe of like every mean girl we love to hate. They just always seem to have the perfect closet, but Personally, if I had to choose just one, Jawbreaker tops the list. Obviously, this is a 90s based wardrobe, but it kind of includes some more retro elements as well, which I think just makes it a more unique approach. And this is one that I definitely frequently referenced, and I'm sure you guys have already noticed, but a bunch of the little cardigans are trending at the moment. And in my opinion, Rose McGowan definitely is the queen bee of this look. But I mean, of course, when we're talking about Mean Girls and teen films, the plastics are usually gonna be the first to come to mind. It's literally been like, what, 15 years? And we are still captioning our Instagram posts with, on Wednesdays, we wear pink. So you cannot tell me that they did not have a severe influence on our wardrobes. I've got to give a shout out to the trio from Never Been Kissed Though, who legit made me want to be a different version of Barbie every year for Halloween. And although it's probably not as wearable, I have to admire Sharpe Evans' closet and all of its tacky 2000s goodness. Disney in general, man, gave us some iconic fashion moments. Alexa, play This Is What Dreams Are Made Of. Hey now. You've got the Cheetah Girls, Life Size serving us a Tyra Banks realness, but actually just about any Lindsay Lohan movie from the early 2000s has some great inspo. The Parent Trap, which kind of makes me want to dress like an evil stepmom. Freaky Friday for your dose of skater girl, more goth, I suppose. And Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen to satisfy your many flamboyant personalities. You can't really look past 90s teen movies though for just an array of different style choices. If you're feeling like you want to be some sort of modern day witch, then The Craft definitely has you covered. Perhaps one of the most legendary wardrobes in film history though goes to Mona May's epic work in Clueless, which I don't know how she did it, but somehow is just forever on trend decades after release. She's All That gives us inspo for both before and after the glow up. Empire Records, I think, provides some of the most realistic inspo for a variety of different moods as well. And another standout for me is Cruel Intentions, which once again serves you options, whether you're feeling a little bit more angelic, like Reese Witherspoon's character, which again, by the way, entire body of work from the 90s could easily be included in this video. But back to the movie at hand, where the star for me is actually Sarah Michelle Gellar's more dastardly role, I suppose. I don't know, I just love how she styles more lingerie-esque pieces in her everyday outfits, yet still somehow manages to have a tough demeanor. And again, this is a look that current trends are emulating. I've been seeing so many corsets popping up recently. For my outfit, I did try to stay more true to the original with the low-waisted pants, but this could easily be modernized with something like a little black skirt or even jeans, I guess, for a more casual option too. If you wanna wind back the clock even further though, then there's always a selection of classics to give you your style fix. From Audrey Hepburn, Sabrina, and Funny Face, Marilyn Monroe in Gentlemen's Prefer Blondes, the often referenced Bonnie and Clyde, the youth quake inspired styling in Valley of the Dolls, Diana Ross's iconic role in Mahogany, and Jane Fonda's embodiment of early 70s trends in Clute. 
Of course, the 80s had a lot to offer as well with the likes of Madonna and Desperately Seeking Susan and just the array of John Hughes's cult teen films. But I mean, since we are strictly speaking fashion, out of those ones, I'd probably recommend starting with Pretty in Pink because it does kind of have fashion woven into the storyline. Today though, I'm actually taking inspiration from the London fashion scene in the 60s, which we see portrayed in the 1966 film Blow Up. To be fair, definitely not the most iconic I could have chosen from this category, but I really just wanted an excuse to wear this mod dress that I thrifted. And if you are planning a thrift day, I think it can actually be really useful to have a quick look through some of these older movies. So that way when you're at the store and you're kind of flicking through a bunch of old clothes that you aren't super familiar with styling, you just have a few ideas in the back of your mind that you can reference. Honestly, often even more modern films like to turn back time and there's a bunch of movies that are set in years gone by that curate some amazing wardrobe designs as well. There's Great Gatsby for a very luxurious take on the 1920s, Atonement for a look at the 30s. Girl Interrupted gave us Angelina Jolie's epic fit in the 60s based movie, one of my favorites. And another film that took inspo from the 60s and just spat out incredible ensembles is The Love Witch. And then kind of skipping through to The Wedding Singer, which actually gave us some very questionable, but also fun 80s inspired looks. But I gotta say, filmmakers are seemingly most infatuated with the 70s. There's numerous movies set in that decade that have a huge impact on many of our fashion choices. Penny Lane and Almost Famous is obviously a huge contributor. The Virgin Suicides for a more angelic approach that's also somewhat creepy in my opinion. Dazed and Confused gave us one of the most quotable lines. All right, all right, all right. But also tons of groovy style inspo. I know a few of you actually messaged me about the fashion in the flashback scenes of Mamma Mia 2. And then there's also American Hustle, which blessed us with a more glamorous take on the era, which is actually the vibe I tried emulating here today. Um, my attempt is significantly less expensive looking though, which is totally understandable considering it totals less than $50. But I think the key is just in the textures with fur and metallics often being the focal point. And as much as I do love this look, it really just felt kind of wrong not to include Kate Hudson's portrayal of the iconic groupy aesthetic and almost famous because I mean it's seemingly still one of the most frequently referenced styles to the point where I swear the afghan coat has practically been renamed the penny lane. I did want to tweak the look slightly though hence the vest option instead but just to show you guys that you don't need exact replicas in order to take inspo from some of your favorite characters you really can just take the inspiration and then make it your own. Just generally speaking the use of color is one of the most important aspects in film and to me honestly the most fascinating. It doesn't always directly correlate with fashion though so I'm not going to talk about too many examples but I thought I'd link you to some of my favorite videos that delve into it further in case you guys are interested. A couple that do come to mind though would have to be Marie Antoinette's pastel color palette which has this strange ability that leaves me wanting to dress like a cake whilst eating one. Perhaps one of the most famous examples though is the Heathers in which they actually assign each main character a signature color to wear that accordingly reflects their personality as well. One of my favorites though just has to be how Wes Anderson uses a unique color palette to create his own world almost. They definitely always come with a very distinct signature and I mean of course his films also have amazing costume design in general with Margot Tenenbaum often cited as a style icon and I have actually created an entire lookbook inspired by some of his work which happens to be one of my favorite videos so I will leave a link to it in the upper corner. Inspiration doesn't always have to come from the most obvious sources though and often some of the coolest costumes come from genres such as sci-fi. The Matrix is a very obvious standout that still influences many wardrobes, my own included. And this coat remains one of my favorite thrift finds so admittedly I do break it out any chance I get but if you ever partook in the me sunglasses trend of last year then you were perhaps unknowingly influenced by this film. Blade Runner is another one that comes to mind and The Fifth Element also blessed us 
with Jean Paul Gaultier's amazing creations as well. Resident Evil and Tomb Raider both brought to life some badass looks, with Lara Croft in particular still influencing styles today. I have to include Barbarella as an unusual reference if you're just looking for a high dose of camp. For real though, over the years, so many outfits have just become symbolic with particular characters. I mean, hello Audrey Hepburn in Breakfast at Tiffany's. Personally, I've never been in on the Fast and the Furious franchise, but you best believe that I know Devin Aoki's iconic pink fit. There's Kill Bill and Pulp Fiction, the leading ladies of Scarface and Casino, Sandy's big reveal in Grease, Leon the Professional, Annie Hall, James Dean, and seriously, countless others. But my favorite take is actually when the outfit is so perfectly made for the character that we know exactly who they are before any dialogue is even spoken. And for me, this is perfectly executed in The Breakfast Club where their appearance tells us exactly which clique each of the characters belong to. Also 10 Things I Hate About You where we have the polar opposite sisters. I will admit the music also plays a big role in that one though. And lastly, Legally Blonde, which just paints the perfect stereotypical aesthetic for Elle Woods, but also kind of allows us to see her adapt her look to her new career as the film goes on while still maintaining her Barbie-like roots. All the outfits are just perfectly flattering on Reese Witherspoon, but I don't know, today I didn't want to tackle a specific look and more so just wanted to generalize and narrow it down to pink and early 2000s because often taking inspiration is just about sparking an idea and then running with it from there. You don't want to do a head to toe carbon copy. So you bend and snap. See? Okay, I got to the end of this video trying to nicely categorize everything but realized I did miss a few off my list so we're just gonna wrap things up with a quick rapid fire to bring us home. We've got Bring It On, Romy and Michelle's high school reunion, La La Land, 13 Going On 30, and Uptown Girls. And there is absolutely no doubt in my mind that I have missed a ton of others. So again, hit me up in the comments with some of your favorites to take inspo from, whether I mentioned them in this video or not. And also, did you guys enjoy this sort of style of video? Let me know if you wanna see a version for maybe TV shows. And I was thinking music would be kind of cool as well, but that would be a huge undertaking so let me know what you guys think and hopefully i'll see you in my next one mm.